Please welcome into our program, Ken Kaiser, who is Temple University's Chief Financial Officer. One of the issues at hand is the potential loss of, what is it, almost 1 million foreign students if the Trump administration gets its way. What kind of impact would that have on, say, your university? So for, for Temple University, um, international students make up about 5 to 6% of the student body, so a little bit less than in some universities. But nonetheless, it would have a significant impact. And for us, we are trying to work out partnerships with other international universities where our foreign students can do a, a, at least a semester of study abroad. But the bottom line is that these international students pay for a public university like Temple out-of-state tuition, and that is a significant driver for our net tuition revenue at the university. So it, it is a, a big concern. Ken, it's Julie here. Talk to me overall about the financial standing of the university right now. Have you had a number of students who said they're not going to be continuing at Temple? And have you all had to contemplate doing any kind of tuition reduction? As far as I know, I believe Princeton is the only university to have announced uh, that kind of, of tuition discount going into the fall. Sure. So uh, for Temple, what we did this year was keep tuition flat. So no tuition increase, no mandatory fee increase as well. Um, it, it is a, a difficult situation. We are trying to strike the balance of student safety and enough in-person uh, or you know, in-classroom uh, experiences versus online. Uh, so we haven't reduced tuition. It's not something that Temple could truly afford to do compared to a Princeton uh, that has a, an endowment north of 25 billion compared to Temple with an endowment of around 650 million. We, we just simply don't have the, uh, the finances to support a reduction in, um, in tuition. We haven't heard from students yet as much. We will be finalizing our class schedule this week where we'll determine which classes will be in person, which will be online. And we are prepared for students to contact contact us uh, after that is made public. Uh, Ken, it's Brian Chung here. Uh, in terms of financing, you bring up the endowments. That's an interesting point, although I guess maybe not, a lot of people aren't aware that a lot of that endowment is often earmarked and can't be used for plugging, for example, uh, short-term shortfalls. But how is the university getting through the shortfalls after maybe reimbursing uh, some students for what wasn't used in the last uh, semester? And then obviously the shortfall from tuition in the next semester, things like the Federal Reserve, I know that they're trying to maybe offer some sort of uh, temporary loans to the Main Street Lending Program. Is that something that you university has been looking at? Uh, we, we have not been looking at that program for Temple University. We refunded uh, more than $20 million in student fees, mainly for room and board, uh, select uh, student course fees, and for parking as well. Um, for us, we've done a lot of um, things to keep expenses down for fiscal 20, which just ended on June 30th. We have a hiring freeze in place. We reduced uh, administrative salaries and um, we did uh, tap into a line of credit that we have with uh, JP Morgan and a second line of credit just in case. Uh, going into next fiscal year, we are planning for a reduction in um, undergraduate enrollment in particular, right now of 5%. We have some contingencies in place if that number were to be greater than that. One positive sign for the university is we had our first and second summer sessions enrollment increase for the first time in over a decade. And both those sessions were essentially all online. So on one hand, that's a positive. On the other, we all know what, what's going on in the uncertainty around that. So we are planning for a decline and, and we hope that it is within that 5% uh, reduction. Hi, Ken. It's Julia LaRoche. You're just referencing some of the the reduction to administrative pay, kind of the online to kind of, I guess, offset any decline in enrollment. But I do want to go back to just the cost Tuition in general, what are you seeing from your incoming freshman class and how do you kind of justify, this isn't just a Temple University question, but just mm -hmm. broadly higher education, justify the tuition when things are going to be different in the future and who knows um, how students might and parents might react for the longer term when they think about just the cost of tuition. How do you justify it? So again, a, a place like Temple University and and you know, all traditional universities, we are not an online university, even though we offer some online courses in the, in the due course of, of business. 
So what we're doing right now is essentially keeping all of the fixed costs and everything associated with running a campus while pivoting to uh, a significant number of classes online. So at Temple, we have millions and millions of square feet that we must uh, maintain, we need to secure. We have staff that is going to be paid whether they are um, teaching online or teaching in person. And then added, we have all of the cost of moving everything online again, because we don't have the infrastructure to teach 40,000 students in an online experience. So what we're telling parents is, you know, this is a, a one time, hopefully a one time, one more semester of a significant remote learning experience. Hopefully in the spring, we're able to move mostly back to the traditional brick and mortars that Temple is used to. In addition to that, at Temple, they are still receiving an education from the same world-class faculty we have, whether they were online or in person, and they are still paying for and receiving those credits. You know, admittedly, it's better to have an in-person experience, but again, we are putting student safety first, and that dictates a lot of classes online to make sure that we're able to adhere to, uh, to social distancing. Ken, let's look past, though, say two, three years after we get a vaccine. Let's hope for the best. The, the coronavirus is behind us. Won't we see consolidation of university systems, public, private, the whole system, and even a consolidation on your campus of what's being offered, perhaps just a much quicker, simpler education offering? You know, absolutely. I mean, after the Great Recession, um, you know, over 10 years ago, everyone thought things were going to change in higher ed. And, and I think they did briefly, but reverted back. And I, I do think this will be a, a jumping off point for change. And I think we will see consolidation. I just don't know how a lot of the smaller uh, private universities are going to survive this, especially if it lasts into the spring. And then some of the publics as well. I do think they will be forced to consolidate and states will will almost mandate that some of their universities uh, do consolidate. At Temple, we are um, getting uh, a little more efficient as a result of this. We already are a very efficient university as, uh, as we look at our benchmarking consortium, but we, we have cut our budget this year by just under $50 million. And of course that comes with a lot of real change, not just change on the margin. So I do think you will see universities um, becoming more efficient, hopefully um, more affordable. And I do think there will be more of a shift to an online medium as students now, essentially in their second semester, possibly in the third semester in the spring to some degree, may get a little uh, bit more used to that. Ken Kaiser is Temple University's Chief Financial Officer. We appreciate your being here. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.